Hello, welcome to the hot seat. I'm Martin Rogers here with Professor Martin Lodge to talk about the recent bank finds. Welcome, Martin. So first of all, why these finds and what's the problem? Well, so the finds were for clearly sort of a misconduct within banks uh, where there were clearly traders um, behaving in ways which was pretty uh, illegal by basically rigging the foreign exchange market. Um, the finds, however, I think reveal a much wider problem. One is um, behaviour was ongoing which was not detected. Um, well, I mean, first one might say um, behaviours were going on while um, scandals elsewhere were already highlighting that there was substantial misconduct going on. Uh, secondly, banks were not picking it up, uh, this misconduct, although they were supposed to be cleaning up their act. And thirdly, there's another problem that regulators didn't pick it up, although there were whistleblowers, there were complaints, and, they, and outsiders did observe these patterns from emerging. So in that sense, one might say this is another kind of a clear signal uh, that there's something um, pro highly problematic um, in the area of financial regulation, that learning within organisations and of regulators is still not um, at a desirable position. So what are the regulators doing about it? Well, the regulators are, do, so are doing partly, they're trying to do deterrence by bringing in ever higher fines, um, which to some extent one might say is not always um, a very valuable uh, strategy. Um, the key point is uh, one has to reduce the incentives of individuals uh, to cheat today uh, and then hope that they will not be found out later, which the deterrence model tries to sort of change. Uh, it would be, and that is some regulators um, do it, um, I think there's far more about the remuneration um, of bankers has to be taking place, that basically the incentives of short-term uh, basically rigging of markets are um, basically eliminated via um, dealing with the incentives. So where do the fines come from? And where does the money actually go at the end? Well, both of them are not necessarily transparent. So basically, the money comes from the banks. So basically, ultimately, the shareholder uh, will suffer, um, so which might be sort of publicly owned. But uh, in other cases of these banks, which have been fined, not all of them are publicly owned. Um, there's always a problem about where do these uh, where does the money go? I mean, we have an, uh, had an announcement that it's likely to go to public causes, uh, so uh, the money will go somewhere. In general, however, fines are collected and they go to a general budget and then they disappear somewhere uh, in the general state uh, budget. Um, and very few uh, or hardly any regulator has basically a budget uh, for income uh, from, from sanctions, um, nor maybe uh, should there be. Uh, because you might say this just introduces incentives to actually punish more uh, than might be desirable. So where do we go from here then? Well, I think um, um, we, we should, well, one question will be, will banks learn? I mean, they still, again, make all the noises about uh, they're going to change uh, and that they basically try to weed out uh, behaviours. Um, whether they'll succeed in doing so um, is another question. Um, regulators will become tough, um, even more tough, arguably, than they have done before. Uh, and therefore, we will move on uh, to the next um, crisis and then learn from that one. Are the regulators likely to become more bold as a result of this action? Well, the argument is that basically there will be more regulatory action. Uh, there might be more concern about trying to deal with uh, sort of the, the, the cultures within organisations. And again, we know that there are problems in organisations about dealing with risk and so on. So I think there will be more attention to these for the next few years. Um, but whether this will then have a long-lasting effect is another uh, kind of um, far more questionable aspect of this affair. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. You're off the hot seat.